The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guest and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Olin TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill. I'm Joey Tysick. And uh, it's been already two weeks since the NFL draft. Uh, I went on vacation to Myrtle Beach last week, which was great. Got a little nice little refresh. Um, and I actually, because I was not working or anything, I got to watch a lot of NBA basketball, which has actually been surprisingly pretty good for the most part. Um, so we'll get into that. But uh, we have to go over a pretty crazy draft. Um, the Lions, once again, made some moves. Uh, there were some surprise picks, um, some not-so-surprising picks. Um, so, to get right into it, uh, Malik, how was your draft experience? You went down to the draft. I was there. So, how the was chaos. that? How was that? I would give the overall experience a good uh, 8 out of 10. Okay. I give it an 8 out of 10. Yeah. The atmosphere was... Awesome. Mm-hmm. Fans from all fan bases were all over the place. Uh, I believe there were more people the second day than the first day because mm-hmm. the numbers just kept going up. Yeah. Uh, the food and drinks were a little too expensive, but eh. enjoyable. The fan experience, like the overall like football fan NFL experience walking around, the Super Bowl ring exhibit was really cool seeing mm. Super Bowl rings from like each year. The, those parts were good. Okay. It was the stuff in between the picks. <laughs> the, like, hyping up the crowd, the cover band stuff. It, it, that stuff I, I wasn't a big fan of. Yeah, just a little bit too cheesy. Yes. Okay. The, the actual football stuff, was it was really entertaining yeah. and cool to see. Awesome. Yeah, I would have liked to go down, but um, just I didn't want to go Thursday night and have to wear a diaper to get in line or whatever, <laughs> but... And then Friday, we had our volunteer banquet here at Owen TV, and yeah. so just not really a time. And then, you know, when you get to the round, what was it, round four is the third day? Do they round two and three on Friday? Well, rounds four through seven were Saturday. Okay, yeah. Um, and at that point, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know any of these guys. Um, so, But that's cool. Uh, we don't get the draft too often. We smashed the attendance record, by the way, yeah. um, by like – 150,000 I think. I think the the previous record was Nashville had like 600,000 and we supposedly had like 750,000 but everybody's like we had there was way, way more apparently than what was accounted for but that's pretty cool. I think a lot of people got to see the the good side of Detroit um see our fan base show up which is really cool. So Yeah, from clips I've seen from fans of other fan bases, they all have said it was awesome. Yeah. Like they said the people of Detroit were great. Mm-hmm. The people that have been to other drafts, they say this is like the, one of the best ones they've ever been to. So yeah, it was really cool. Awesome. That's what happens when we get winning teams. We show up. Yes. Unfortunately, we just haven't had too many. Unfortunately, of those. it took too long. Yeah, almost fifty years. <laughs> right. Yes. Um. So the draft went down. Let's go with let's go with the winners first because those are I think the winners are fairly easy. To go over, uh, the losers are kind of easy as well. But who would you say is like your biggest winner, so to speak, in this draft? Biggest winner to me, I hon- I honestly haven't watched many like podcasts or show clips from ESPN about like who people's winners or losers are. Yeah. So honestly, that's kind of the best way to do yeah, it. Yeah, I, I I don't have like a trend following like choice of right. who I think a favorite is. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, like the Chicago Bears, a lot of people say they had, maybe they won the draft. Caleb Williams, Rumble Dunze, having those as your first two picks is amazing. Yeah. And I honestly think uh, getting Tory Taylor in the fourth round was big, too, because having a high-level punter mm-hmm. can swing games for you. Yeah. But I don't know if they're like my overall, I don't know if I have a, like an overall winner of the draft, mm-hmm. but I'd say 
one of my favorites when it comes to a team that's like starting from the bottom for the first time in a very long time. Mm-hmm. New coach, new regime, drafted a new quarterback and got him weapons. Guys I think can come in and help right now. Something their former coach did, wasn't good at, finding skill talent. I think the New England Patriots did a great job. Mm. You took Drake May. You didn't make it any – there wasn't any suspense. They didn't trade or do anything. Yeah. They took the guy on the board that was the most talented at a position of need. I like the pick of Jalen Polk in the second round. Maybe a bit high, but – Yeah. He was a part of the be- one of the best receiving cores in college football. Uh, A possession receiver. Romo Dunze was their number one. Mm-hmm. Jalen McMillan was the speed guy, and Jalen Polk was like just a possession guy. He made big catches. He made like circus catches. Right. Uh, I think J- Javon Baker from UCF, another receiver. He's a speed guy. He's a guy you can use in like reverses and other types of like gadget plays mm-hmm. and the return game. And then the value of getting Jaheim Bell in the se- in the seventh round, a tight end from Florida State who's a su- super athletic. Yeah. I think he was second in the country in yards after catch to Malachi Corley, mm-hmm. who went in the third round to the Jets. Everybody said he was like the yak monster of the draft. Right. Malachi Corley was. Jaheim Bell was only like a few yards off, like .4 or 5 yards away from Malachi Corley. So he is very talented. I was surprised. He fell this far, and a few other guys, like Brendan Rice. I, I couldn't believe he fell mm-hmm. as far as he did. But I was a big fan of what New England did. And I think they have some guys that can help improve them from the jump. Yeah. Um, One of my winners, uh, my kind of like sneaky winner, I think, that a lot of people haven't really talked about, is the Cincinnati Bengals. They got a huge lineman in Amarius Mims, 6'8" almost 350. Um, they ended up getting Chris Jenkins in the second round, which, I mean, you know the talent that's there. Um, so I think that's a sneaky one. And then I, I get there's a lot of controversy around him, but getting a guy like Jermaine Burton in the third round when they put, could potentially be losing T. Higgins in this upcoming season, he could just fill that role immediately. Yeah, Just – Big go go up and get it receiver, um, just makes plays, and then even like, I don't know if this is a t- touchy topic for you, but Eric All in the fourth round. I like the pick. Um, big he's coming off end. a torn ACL, so yeah. yeah. So there's there's some talent there, but I think they did a sneaky good job with what they had and what the positions of need that they have. Um, we know they need to protect Joe Burrow more, so Marius Mims hopefully can do that. And then again, like I said, if, if T. Higgins um, is traded, they have Burton and Chris Jenkins, which they just lost D.J. Reader to the Lions. So maybe Chris Jenkins can fill in there as well. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll mention a few other teams. I don't know. How do the Eagles keep getting away with it? Yeah, yeah. That was one, how, that was one of my teams I was going to bring up. Quinion Mitchell. Mm-hmm. People thought Cooper DeJean was going to be their pick in the first round. Yeah. He falls to them in the second round, and they still get him. Yep. It's ridiculous. They got both of them. Mm-hmm. You get Will Shipley in the fourth. Yep. Late fourth. He's he can return. He's gonna be a return guy. He can catch passes out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. He can do a lot of what Saquon Barkley does. Not as like an elite level, but he can do all those things. Yeah. I think Jeremiah Trotter was a good fifth round pick. Mm-hmm. Trevor Keegan in the fifth round. Yep. And then Johnny Wilson is just the ultimate like wild card. Just huge wide receiver. If, if he hits. <laughs> He's six six two thirty, mm-hmm. and ran a four five. Yeah. Well, will they make him a tight end? Who knows? A flex receiver. Like, what right. do they do with him? Yeah. Because if he can improve his hands, he he's an athletic freak. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know how the Eagles keep doing it. Yeah. And then, I really like what Pittsburgh did. Okay. He started in the trenches. Troy Fatanu, Zach Frazier from West Virginia, mm-hmm. Roman Wilson in the third was a really good pick. Peyton Wilson in the third. I, I don't know how he fell that far. He ran a four three forty yard dash. Yeah, and was linebacker of the year in college football. <laughs> like I, it, it's insane that Pittsburgh ended up getting him where they got him. Mm-hmm. And then Mason McCormick, more help in the trenches. Logan Lee on defense. Yeah, I really like what Pittsburgh did. Yeah, um, the other one that I was gonna bring up, 
<clears throat> oh, I think I think Washington did a really good job. I mean, obviously, you get the number two pick. It's not too hard. Uh, but they picked Jay, uh, Jaden Daniels. Then they got Jerzon Newton, uh, who I think we both liked. You, you mocked him to the Lions, right? Oh, Jerzon Newton, yeah. Yeah. Um, they got Mike Sanders still. They traded up for him. Um, and then they got a little-known guy, Ben, ben Sinnott. I think yeah. a lot of people – I. People had been talking about him um, after the draft, so I had to look him up, and he looks like he could be a beast. Yeah, he's he's like a fullback tight end hybrid. Yeah. He might be the best blocking tight end that got drafted. Mm -hmm. So depending on how you feel about Jaden Daniels, that those top four of right. that class are could be awesome. Yeah, and then even getting Luke McCaffrey, I know there's some unknowns with him coming from Rice. I like him a lot. He's got a lot yeah. of good upside. He's, I mean, obviously it's a athletic family. Yeah. So he ran a faster forty than his brother. Yeah. So he could work out. Um, and then the other team that I was going to bring up is the Chargers. Um, they just kind of – they played it somewhat safe, but they did what they needed to. Um, a lot of things just fell to them later in the draft. Yeah. Like, I think that Kamani Vital pick yeah. in the sixth round, he is a beast. Mm -hmm. He could be, a, like, one of the biggest steals of the draft. Yeah. And what, we already brought up Brendan Rice. Like, I, how did he fall all the yeah. way there? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's crazy. Yeah, the, the nice thing is – the Chargers needed wide receiver help, and they got so many chances. It, they've even been uh, talking to, I guess, uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling in the offseason right now. So they have, like, a load of wide receivers that could potentially be good for their team. Yeah. They got a bunch of guys with chips on their shoulders. Yeah. They got one of the best linemen in the entire draft, Joe Alt, at five. Lad McConkey falling to the second round. I know it's second pick in the second round, but still, he yeah. was expected to go first round. He basically fills in the Keenan Allen slot uh, for them. And then, like I said, um, like you brought up Brennan Rice, an outside receiver, which they still need to figure out. And then Cornelius Johnson, another possible outside receiver. Just guys that, you know, they're kind of throwing darts at, but have good upside late in the draft. Yeah. So. And uh, the obvious pick, taking Junior Colson. Yeah. He's, he's going to be the heart of the defense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they were able to retain Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. So, like, He's gonna learn behind them, like yeah, that's pretty darn good. As long I, the problem with the Chargers, staying healthy, that's been their problem all along. So we'll have to wait and see. Their offense is gonna be a lot different this year, but I think they did pretty good in this draft. All right, losers, and I'm just gonna bring it up right away. The Falcons. Do you think <laughs> they're the biggest loser in this draft? Taking Michael Penix at eight when Listen, they just man. signed. Kirk Cousins to a four-year deal. It literally all depends on what happens four or five years from now. Mm -hmm. Like we we can't. It looks crazy right now, and their reasoning sounds crazy still, even though they tried to make it make sense. Yeah. So we don't we don't plan on ever being back in the top ten, and we want to have our guy right. Now. Okay, that that's cool. Yeah, you got Kirk Cousins. You could win some games right now, mm -hmm. but like, it, it's it's still crazy. Mm -hmm. It's still wild. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. It's I I get the idea of it, and that there maybe there's some nerve that Kirk Cousins could fall off after two years or something, and then I think his deal gets a little friendlier if they needed to get out of it. But ah, man, I just feel like honestly, no, because I I guess there was rumors that. The Raiders wanted Michael Penix and stuff like that. So maybe you feel too much pressure. But the problem was, like, there was so many good players right there that they could have taken to help their team right then and right now when they definitely need defensive help. That was, I think, the confusing part because they could have gone so many other ways. And even, like, I wouldn't have knocked them at taking, like, Roma Dunze. He would have fit in pretty good there. Take an offensive lineman. I don't know. It just seemed a little bit too rich for my blood. And the problem being that they just, it seems like it kind of stymies what they're trying to do right now. And I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I, um, I don't know if any. I don't think. I don't know if any team had like an overall terrible draft, really. Mm -hmm. But there are two teams where I'm kind of. I have a lot of questions still. 
first of all, I think just because of what Cleveland did to themselves with the Deshaun Watson contract, what they've left for themselves in making draft picks. Yeah. Like Zach Zinner could work out in a big way. Right. He's coming off an injury and looks like he could be very healthy again. I like Jamari Thrash out of Louisville. Mm -hmm. I think Michael Hall is is all right. And the rest of their picks are okay. I I don't know what's going to happen there. The New York Giants. (laughs) You got Malik Neighbors. The fan base should be excited about having a possibly really good receiver. Yeah. You still don't have O-line help. And you still have Daniel Jones. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at these draft picks. They're some interesting guys. But what are they giving you right now? Yeah. Like Theo Johnson is like a project tight end. Tyrone Tracy is a project running back. Tyler Newbin and Andrew Phillips could help you, I guess, but they're already known as a good defensive team. Mm -hmm. Like becoming a very good offensive team is what they need to do in order to like take the next step. Yeah. And I just I just don't know if I don't know if they have it. Mm -hmm. Like Malik Neighbors by himself isn't going to turn that team around. Like Odell Beckham couldn't do it. Yeah. I I just I just don't know where they're going to go from here. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel the same about Carolina, and not that their draft was like bad by any means. Like getting Xavier Leggett and Jonathan Brooks are two very good players. Yeah, Jatavian Sanders in the fourth was a steal, too. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, like, they just signed Deontay Johnson. I know Adam Thielen's getting a year older. They uh, they needed help. But they, they needed some real help with the receiving core because guys weren't getting open. Yeah. I, but I also just feel like they need offensive line help as well. They do. To, get, yeah. to keep Bryce Young safe in the pocket. Um, Jonathan Brooks... I mean, I guess that just means they're giving up on Chuba Hubbard is what it sounds like, taking him in the second round, um, or at least competing. I don't know. It just seemed... They're desperate. Yeah. And they, they picked like they were desperate. Yeah. I, I think that's just my problem is that, like, I don't know if they're at that point where they can just try to take swings, I guess. It just felt odd to me. Again, I, I kind of agree. Like, there wasn't, like, a terrible draft. But I just felt like they have other needs as well. I think the Cowboys have picked very, very well in the draft recently. Mm -hmm. I'm not impressed by this draft that the Cowboys had. It's kind of like if you're a Cowboys fan, you just have to go with the mindset of they've they've picked well, so I just have to believe. Mm -hmm. Like you look up and down this thing. Like Cooper Beebe, I think that was a really good pick in the third round. Yeah. But Tyler Guyton has a lot of size. He has to work to like become a really good offensive lineman in the NFL. He's kind of raw. Marshawn Nealon from Western Michigan. I'm not sure mm-hmm. <laughs> about that one. Like that that was a big reach to me. Mm-hmm. Like he was a good pass rusher in the MAC, but I don't think he was anything special. Yeah. To go in the second round. It yeah. I'm just not a huge fan of what they did. <laughs> yeah. Uh the other one. Oh, Las Las Vegas. And again, it's not like that they didn't get anything talent wise. They got the best tight end in the draft in Brock Bowers. Jackson Powers Johnson, who fell for some reason, he was at one point predicted to be late first round, went in the early second round. But they just drafted Michael Mayer last year. So unless they're fully committing to like two tight end ground and pound. I don't think Brock Bowers Brock Bowers is not gonna have his hand in the dirt every Every no. three downs, he's going to be half receiver, half tight end. Yeah, like he's. Th- it has to be yeah. the way that they're thinking, but it's one of those ones. That they're different types of players. It's hard to figure out until you see it on the field of how they're going to make it work. Um, and I know again they got they wanted probably a quarterback, and all the quarterbacks got taken pretty quick. Um, so I get it, but it's just it's just a little bit odd for me. Nothing too crazy. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. Everybody else did decent. All right. Um, what was some of your, let's do specific little, like, what was one of your like favorite picks that a team made? Uh, favorite pick that a team made. Uh, 
I'll tell you mine. I'm not sure if I was ready. I was about to That's say, okay. you I'll, go I'll go with mine because I brought mine up. It's the guy that – did I put in our mock draft? I think I just brought him up. No, I didn't. I put him on another, like, one of my favorite draft prospects that I didn't think would go in the first round, but he did, is Ricky Pearsall. And him going to San Francisco, he could just – he might just plop right into that offense and be able to give them something – because it sounds like either Debo Samuel or Brandon Ayuk is going to be either traded or something. That one of those guys is going to be gone, and he can fill in to like that slot role and be a dump-off valve for Brock Purdy. And I think him across the middle just might be really dangerous for that team. And it sounds like right now they're leaning towards getting rid of Debo Samuel. So it might be Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, and Ricky Pearsall, which would be pretty fun, I think. So just personally... Um, that was one of my favorite picks. Not that it was like crazy good value or anything like that. Just kind of the fit and overall pick. That's what I liked. Uh, I like Blake Corm to the Rams a lot. Yeah, that that's a really good fit. Yeah, I think having him as a second back that can also carry a load when you need it mm-hmm. is a big help. And I also love what they did pairing Jared Verse and Braden Fisk again. Yeah, those were some good yeah, picks. Yeah, after losing Aaron Donald, there's no way you can replace an all-time great right. like that. Mm-hmm. But getting those two guys next to each other, I think is they can give you some production right now. Yeah, and that's a really big help. So I really like what they did. Um, Jared Wiley to Kansas City. Hmm. Okay, he's not going to be another Travis Kelsey. Not too many people, are. but I think there's a chance he could be a really good tight end in the in the league. Hmm. Like I, I think if they start to like take a little bit of off of Travis Kelsey mm-hmm. so he can play longer and give some more to Jared Wiley. Yeah. I think he can produce yeah. very early because yeah. he, he's six, seven, like well over 250 pounds. He has good hands. He runs good routes. Now he has to establish that chemistry with Pat Mahomes, but I think he gives you a lot from the jump Yeah, that could help you balance with Travis Kelsey and keep him fresh. Mm-hmm. So I like that Jared Wiley to Kansas city pick a lot. Yeah. Uh, the other one that I was going to bring up is Trey Benson to the Cardinals. Uh, James Conner is another year older, and they're going to need a replacement. And he runs sub 4-4 speed. So if he can kind of learn, get some some carries this year, and then maybe next year, maybe go into the full-time role, and Arizona all of a sudden has Kyler Murray looking good again, Marvin Harrison Jr., Trey Benson, like they might have an explosive offense. Trey McBride. Uh, who emerged last yeah, year. Michael like, Wilson, too. Michael yeah, Wilson. Michael Wilson, another year under his belt. Like, they might get something going with those guys, and they could be an explosive offense and fun to watch. So, I think that was a pretty good pick for them, specifically. Spencer Rattler <laughs> to the New Orleans Saints. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's this timeline or this universe, but I think there is a timeline slash universe where he comes in I think he's learned every lesson he's needed to learn at South Carolina. Mm-hmm. He has been humbled. His last year there, he had to do everything. Yeah, He never complained. He never cried. He didn't talk bad about anyone. He led. He, he, he almost upset Georgia at Georgia. Yeah. He had no problem putting everything on his shoulders. The old line was bad. Xavier Leggett was like his one trusted receiver. Mm-hmm. He just went out there and did it. Yeah, And I think the way his mindset is now, He's not the highest level athlete, but his arm, he makes some special throws. Mm -hmm. And when he gets into a rhythm, he can be really good. Yeah. And I think if the Saints give him a chance, I think he could run with it. Hmm. So I I like the Saints taking Spencer Rattler in the fifth. Yeah, I think he definitely has a, a surprise factor that people could remember that at one point he was a first round talent for people. Um so if he can get back to that and you took him in the fifth round, I don't see much of a risk. I mean, Derek Carr still got years under him um, if he needs, so maybe Spencer can even learn the NFL system before yeah. he gets there. Um, and then he'll have Chris Olave as soon as he steps in, if he takes over at some point, um, which would be pretty big. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, one last honorable mention. Let's get some goal line packages for Joe Milton in New England. Let, let's get him out there mean to bring and just that. let him run through people on the goal. I'd I'd love yeah. to see it. Use mm-hmm. him. Yeah. 
Or just have him yeah. throw 70 yard bombs <laughs> every once in a while. You need while. a Hail Mary? Listen. Yeah. yeah. A Hail Mary pack. In the first half, end of the game, Hail Marys, let him chuck it. That'd be so funny. Drake May, take a seat. <laughs> Joe Milton's coming in for a minute. Hey, man, get to get some fancy packages. I can't – I'd love to see it. They don't have any, like, straight-up burners, though, on their <laughs> their receiving court, do they? Yeah. Javon Baker is, like, the speed guy they yeah. brought in. But, yeah, besides him, they don't have just, like, a lot of speed guys. That's unfortunate. It'd be crazy if they t- chain him to a tight end or something. Yeah. It's just interesting seeing him in the league. Mm-hmm. Good value pick in the seventh round. <laughs> um, all right. Now we got to get to the the main squeeze here, the Detroit Lions. Traded up, got the 24th overall pick, took Terry and Arnold in the first round, which some people had him graded as the top cornerback. Some people had him right behind Quinion Mitchell. And then I thought was a pretty good value. We got Ennis Rakestraw late in the second round, which a lot of people thought yeah. would be early second round. I was there for round. that pick. Yeah, that's a cool one. Um, so we got back-to-back cornerbacks. Then... In the fourth round, we did a lot of wheeling and dealing. Um, we got Giovanni Manu from British Columbia University or something, I think. I was there for that one, too. I forgot. Were you? That pick right there. Wild. The be- seeing it live, seeing a British Columbia on the board, yeah. it was like, whoa. Mm-hmm. They are taking a swing. Yeah. And, and yeah, uh, several people around me started doing their research <laughs> of who he was yeah. when the pick came in. And the reason they took him is he's 6'8", 350 pounds. He's a freak of nature, and he ran under five seconds in the 40-yard dash. Yeah, he's massive. Um, apparently, um, he's also – oh, man, why can I not think of – why can I not think of the island that he's from, that his family's from? Uh, anyway, I'm not, yeah, I'm not 100. Sure. Anyway, the Lions are kind of taking a risk, similar to how the Eagles took Jordan Mailata. Yeah, that, that's what I was telling my friends when they took. Mm-hmm. I was like, they're trying to get their Jordan Mailata. Yeah, um, but it seems like him and Penny Sewell should get along pretty well, um, because they're mo- they're both. I think it's both Samoan. I, I Pacific Islanders. Yeah, it's like Pacific yeah. Islander. I don't know if it's specifically Samoan, um, for them, but. They apparently like they already have talked a little bit. So if you're yeah, learning, the perfect person to learn. Yeah, from. if you're learning behind Penny Sewell, I'm thinking he can figure it out as long as he's yeah. got the skill and the mental capacity. He should be good. Um, which it is a swing pick. A lot of people think they could have taken him a lot later, but um, still, I'm okay with it. It's a fun pick. The Lions at this point, Brad Holmes, he's allowed to make these picks. Um, and then. Late in the fourth round. I want to know your feelings on this one because this this is a pick to me. Is it Sione? Sione. Sione Vaki? Yeah. Announced as a running back. And he played safety at Utah, but he played also both sides. played running back. I had no idea, so I had to do my research. <laughs> did you watch the highlights? I did. It, um, is, it is it is really interesting, honestly. Yeah. Because he can really like cut and move mm-hmm. as a running back. But he can also hit and like make plays as a safety. Yeah, so I'm I'm really interested to see what the Lions do. This might be another one that it's just like they like that this guy has it all. Special team like the Lions are a huge special teams yeah, kind exactly. of team. Um they focus a lot on it more than I think some other teams do. So I could easily see like think of him and Rodrigo. Like those two guys just going at it. Um I think could do some special things. I don't know if they're going to put him in any running back slots. It's it's hard to say because Listen, no knowing the way that the way they like to run offense and the chances they like to take mm-hmm. I will not be surprised if they have some very weird random special packages yeah. that involve him. So could they do like a triple reverse with Jamison Williams, <laughs> Vaki and somebody I don't know. Does I I can't even think if it I don't. Th- I assume they're not going to run the Wildcat, but they had him run that a lot at Utah. They could be some reverse stuff, some goal line stuff. Yeah. It, yeah, there are a lot of possibilities. Mm-hmm. So the two guys in the fourth round, super interesting picks. Big kind of heavy swings um, to see what they can get out it, of these it, guys. Doesn't it kind of feel good that you're not, like, alarmed or afraid mm-hmm. of these swings? Yeah. Because your team is in such a good place? Yeah, it's wild. It's rare, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. But then the crazy, the 
to me, the craziest part was these value picks in the sixth round. Exactly. <laughs> the sixth round was yeah. crazy. Like, how did they get Makai Wingo and Christian Mahogany? Those are two guys that'll probably be in, in rotation for some years. Yeah. Like, Makai Wingo is a pass rushing defensive tackle mm-hmm. that won't probably won't play every down, but can be valuable. Right. And Christian Mahogany, who knows? He could start in the league eventually. Yeah. And again, it's what we wanted. We wanted some offensive line help. We took two offensive line win, linemen, one that's a little safer, one that's a project, but they don't have to play right away. They get to sit behind one of the best offensive lines in the league. Uh, and I think that's what the exciting part is. And even with, like, Makai Wingo, he's going to be behind DJ Reader. Um, so, like, he's going to be able to also learn from some good vets now, too. So it's like all these young guys are being able to learn from people, which is Awesome. Yeah. ESPN had Christian Mahogany ranked as the sixth highest guard. Yeah. And we got him in the sixth round. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Um, so the late round picks, once again, it feels like Brad Holmes did his thing. Um, how do you feel about the back to back cornerbacks? Because I, I know some people have been a little iffy about it. I honestly I wanted them to take a receiver in the second or fourth round, mm-hmm. but with what they have. I'm sure they'll like add a veteran piece if they need a receiver. They can if they want to in free agency. Mm-hmm. I love it in retrospect. Yeah. Even with signing Carlton Davis and Amig Robertson, mm-hmm. aren't they both on one-year deals? Uh, no, Carlton re-signed, I believe, like a okay. three-year deal after the Amig Robertson is one-year deal. Yeah. Same with Emmanuel Mosley. So, yeah. Carlton Davis is like your one secure guy. Mm-hmm. And there's no... <laughs> real guarantees outside of that. Mm-hmm. So taking these two guys, both played in the ACC, blo- I mean SEC, both played at a high level. I I don't see the problem with it at all. I only yeah. see adding on to a position of need. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. thing, the in, thing a, in a division where offense is getting better all around. Yeah, the thing that I like the most, Terry and Arnold. He's like, to me. He's the guy that knows where to be at the right time. Yeah. He's not necessarily the most athletic. He's obviously very athletic, but like he he's so he good has, technically. Right. Yeah. And then you have Rake Straw who's just kind of a dog and that fits the mold for yeah. the team. Like having those two guys seems like a good pairing. Plus think about what our secondary was 2 years ago. And now let me tell you, we have Terry and Arnold Ennis Rakestraw, Kirby Joseph, Efitu Malafonwu, Brian Branch, Carlton Davis, the, ver- Manuel listen, Mosley, the versatility man, Meek Robertson. Yes, that's seven guys. You have options, and they're going to be able to get thrown all over the place. You got guys that can blitz. You got guys that can cover man. You got guys that can cover zone. You're going to have yeah. guys that don't have to stay on the field for every single play. Exactly. You can rotate these guys in, do different things. Kamani Vital does not have to be in on third downs. <laughs> he doesn't have to. Oof. You got some guys that can make plays. Yeah. That's how, that's a relief, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Woo, deep breath, yeah. Lions fans. <laughs> so, again, our secondary all of a sudden becomes the prime spot of our defense. At least serviceable, better yeah. than it was last year. Mm-hmm. Which, usually in turn, if the cornerbacks can hang, that allows more pressure to get up front. So, hopefully, everything can come together. I'm really interested to see what they're going to do with Brian Branch. Because he's going to get thrown all over the place, I feel like, on the field. Um, and they can do some really interesting things with the secondary. So, it it's great to go into a season, once again, loving another draft coming off of the season that we had last year and just feeling good about things again still, which is crazy. I still can't, still can't get to get used to it. Um, you have an overall grade that you want to give the lions. I would give them because of how big those swings were in the fourth round. Yeah. It's interesting, but it's still, it could go, it could go boom or bust. Mm -hmm. So I will go uh, a minus B plus. I'll go A minus because of those six round picks. Yeah, I, I kind of, yeah. I hate to kind of piggyback, but I'm I'm kind of lining up with an A minus as well. You get two cornerbacks that can basically fill in almost right away. You take the big swings, 
And then you have these safety net picks late in the draft. And again, the guys that they took swings on, they don't have to start right away or anything. Yeah. There's no pressure on them to get into the game. Um, they just have time to learn and figure out the offense and the defense and figure out what they're going to do with those guys and with that talent. So, yeah, I, I would go A minus two again. I saw some people say that the Lions, once again, had one of the best drafts of the entire field. So that's good to know that. Although I will say, I think a little analysts were scared to criticize the Lions draft after they criticized them last year. And then, you know, the yeah. game started playing and they showed that they killed it. So, yeah. Once again, super excited for the Lions season. Um, I'm pretty sure they're done with free agency stuff. They they might look at a couple wide receivers maybe here or there, um, but nothing crazy from what I can tell. I wonder if they would trade for somebody. There's been some rumors about that kind of stuff, um, but nothing that's like concrete at the moment. Yeah. Um, you, you've got depth at a few positions now to where you could maybe give up one or two yeah. guys. The one right now that people are kind of talking about is because Taj Boyd just signed um, with um, well, uh, Tyler Boyd. Tennessee. Yeah, Tyler Boyd signed with Tennessee. Signed with Tennessee yep. that a lot of people are thinking that Traylon Burks might be available. That's a, that's another that, – that's mm -hmm. not a necessary swing. Yeah, it's it, – yeah. the problem is like, – If you got Donovan Peoples-Jones, I don't think you need to – That's yeah. that's the kind of the problem. He's kind of a similar player to DPJ, so – I don't know. I wouldn't hate it as if it was like something small just to have another possible young receiver, but I don't think it's it's necessary. Yeah. Well, the, the Laporta is also basically like their yeah. number two receiver. So Right. Yeah. Um, the other thing to watch out for is I think it's June 6th. I think June 6th is where there's a lot of contract changes for a lot of players like Debo Samuel, I believe. It's easier to get rid of Debo Samuel after June 6th or something like that. So that might be a date to watch out for where teams will make some more moves again. Um, so just something to keep an eye out for. And, uh, yeah. Other than that, there's not too much going on in the NFL season until, you know, we get around to the fall again, which is crazy. Yeah. Hall of Fame game is in June? Wait, wait. When is the Hall of Fame game? That would be like early August, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, early August, yeah. Something like that. I forgot. Um, so, yeah, we'll take a little yeah. break from NFL unless there's – any crazy news or something i'm sure i'll Which, watch a few episodes of hard knocks depending on who the team is yeah um we got to get rasheed rice out of the news that's all i gotta say <laughs> i wasn't even thinking about it listen they yeah. drafted xavier worthy yeah let's keep <laughs> move it on keep it pushing all righty um so nfl kind of wraps up their nfl season and uh getting ready for the next season but the nba playoffs i mentioned have actually been you know pretty pretty good for the most part um, the Lakers lost, which is great. Yeah. So we're both happy about that. Um, what's kind of your takeaways of the first round and even into the second round now that we've kind of go gotten going, what's a team that you've really enjoyed watching? What's a team that, you know, kind of disappointed? What's your feel of the playoffs so far? Um, in terms of the, the Eastern conference, the magic have a bright future. They took the Cavs seven. Mm -hmm. Franz and Paolo, I I love what they do, and I love the pieces around them. Uh, the Bucks, ah, when they hired Doc Rivers, we didn't understand it. Yeah, and even though they didn't have Giannis, it still never made sense. Mm -hmm. So I don't know their their reign, unless yeah. Giannis comes back with an absolute vengeance. I don't know what they do. The Seventy Sixers. The process. Joel Embiid, the process is, was over when Ben Simmons left. This is just the holding on to an all-time big man at this point is what the Sixers are doing. Yeah, They can't put a proper roster around him. He can't stay healthy or be in good enough shape enough to finish playoff series. Mm -hmm. And even though Tyrese Maxey is emerging as a young star, potential superstar, it doesn't seem to matter. Because the other guys like Tobias Harris can't score. Yeah. Literally can't score in closeout games. Even though some teams that I will not mention are willing to maybe give him a max offer. Listen, the, the, anyway. the half ghost of Nick Batum played better than Tobias Harris. Yeah. That shows you what type of position they're in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's get those negatives out the way. Let's go Knicks. 
Yeah. I am fully rooting for the New York Knicks. Made it to the second round two years in a row. I, the way they play basketball is everything I I love about the game and what it used to be when mm-hmm. I was growing up. Yeah. 2000s basketball where defense still mattered, but high level offense was still a part of the game. Yeah. Jalen Brunson, man. 40 and four straight games. Mm-hmm. First time since MJ himself. Yeah. He, he's he's a machine at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know how he's continuing to do it. The Nova Knicks, Don, Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart is a real machine. I, yeah. I don't know how he does it. Yeah. He's averaging like 47 minutes a game. Mm-hmm. Triple goes, like goes, goes. 14, 15 rebounds, hitting timely threes. Mm-hmm. The hustle plays. Deuce, I love when Deuce McBride comes in and gives energy. Isaiah Hart and stuff. They're like seven to eight man rotation. I wish um, Bogdanovich was healthy. I was just going to say, the, the wild I thing is, they're without Bogdanovich. They won't play Alec Burks. Julius Randle is hurt. I know he might have hurt the chemistry, but still it stinks. Um, so, like, it's weird. They made these moves. And they're not really using them, but they're still getting it done. Yeah, that like I, that's what I love. So they are a New York team, the t- the type of team the Knicks forgot they like need mm-hmm. for years. They kept chasing superstars and free agency. We need this guy. We need that guy. Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant. It was LeBron James in 2010. They thought they had a chance at him. Yeah, that's not how the Knicks win, and that's not what Knicks fans. They say they want superstars, mm-hmm. and it would help to have some, but that's not that's not what they want. Yeah, this is what they want. Mm-hmm. Now they still need another guy to try like to go over the hump. I was gonna say, but be this, ready for this off season because it probably will still happen. This is everything Knicks fans go to see mm-hmm. at Madison Square Garden, and that's the type of basketball I love. Yeah, grit and hustle and nonstop defense and just dudes that don't. Dudes that care but don't care at the same time. Mm. Like Dante DiVincenzo, he's not a star. He's not even a star player. He's going to hit big threes Mm. just because he has to, just because he knows he has to. Josh Hart is going to hit timely threes and get stops in the clutch just because he knows he has to. Mm -hmm. These guys just get it done. They're star-level players that can't get it done. Yeah, The Clippers are dead. (laughs) We haven't gotten to the Western Western Conference yet. Mm -hmm. But Russ, James, Paul George – Get him out of here. Yeah. Kawhi is the one person with championship pedigree, and he can't stay healthy. Mm-hmm. The rest of them, they don't have it in them anymore. Even if they, if any of them did, they don't have it anymore. Yeah. All of these Knicks guys just get it done, mm-hmm. and they make no excuses. Yeah. I, I love it. Yeah. I love watching them play. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about the, the Heat situation, being a big Jimmy Butler guy? <sighs> <laughs> I mean, we knew the Celtics were going to be good. But you thought the playoff heat would have somewhat showed up a little bit. They are, they're they're starting to get on my nerves <laughs> because they are mediocre in the regular season. Mm-hmm. They're unhealthy for a lot of the time, or they just sit guys, and they end up in the sixth or seventh seed, sometimes the eighth seed. Yeah, and they've made the finals twice in the past five years. But they 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 keep playing this dang. They got to stop playing this dangerous game. Mm-hmm. They have to. Yeah. And having Jim having Jimmy Butler would have given them a really good chance. Right. But they they got to stop playing this game in the regular season. Yeah. Like just get a top four seed mm-hmm. and don't stop messing around. Yeah. Bam Adebayo was like a top five big at this point. He's gotten so much better on offense, and he's still a high level defender. Mm-hmm. Jaime Jaquez was a home run pick. I don't know what Tyler Hero is at this point. I'm really not sure. Mm-hmm. But you, the Heat culture just makes things work, yeah, and keeps you competitive. You you got to do it in the regular season, yeah, because playing these games keeps putting you in these positions mm-hmm. where you're gonna just have tough matchups to start the playoffs, yeah, every year. And when you have Jimmy Butler that goes out, Terry Rozier goes out, Jaime Hawkins goes out, that's why you want those top seeds so that if you get hurt. You can play these lower level teams and still win. Exactly. Um, the last game, game five against the Celtics, without all those guys, they shot three for twenty nine from the three point line. Was it game two where they shot like fifty eight percent from yeah, three? Yeah, they just weren't missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the other wild thing to me, 
I felt like the reason that they started winning towards the late in the season was they were playing Duncan Robinson a lot again, and he was having good games. Didn't see him too much in the playoffs. Yeah, they they put everything just, into uh, Caleb Martin. Yeah, and oh, is it Caleb or Cody? I can't remember. They have Caleb. Which one? Okay, Caleb. And in the playoffs, he continues to just light up out of nowhere. Mm. But you still need more. Like Nikola Jovic has promise. He's shown he can stick with the Heat. Yeah. Like I said, Jaime Jaquez was a home run. They they've done a great job developing guys and making picks. Mm-hmm. But you have to show that you're a high level team. Yeah. You have to show it. Yep. All right, let's shift over to the West. Like we said, Lakers losing to the Nuggets in five. Um, Lakers just, I don't know, one day. one day They were up in every game. <laughs> yeah. That was and we'll get to the second round with the Nuggets. It's kind of showing that the Nuggets have kind of lost some sauce. Yeah. But, yeah. The funny thing was the one game people were going crazy for D'Angelo Russell, and then the next game – they wanted him out of the league. Um, he had a very up and down series. LeBron did his thing, but the Lakers are just they're toast. Um, do you think LeBron stays with the Lakers? I can't call it at this point, man. I okay. he probably stays just because Los Angeles is where he's he's he has the production company. He has everything in LA that he wants, yeah. like the business stuff. Right. Now, well, he'll still have that if he leaves L.A. Mm-hmm. Like, I, if he wants to win another ring, he needs to go. And I'm not sure if he wants to win another ring or just – maybe he thinks his legacy is cemented. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. We'll have to see. Yeah. But the Lakers aren't winning another ring with this core at least. Yeah. Um, There was two sweeps in this. On this side, we had the Thunder just demolishing the Pelicans. Again, once we saw Zion Williamson go down – we knew it was basically going to be curtains. Um, Thunder just looked good. And then the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves. Let me say that one more time. The Minnesota Listen, Timberwolves. I, I'm still wrapping my head around. Swept Kevin Durant, yeah. Devin Booker, eh, Bradley Beal, and the Suns. And most people predicted the Suns would win in like six mm-hmm. because they kind of dominated the regular season series. Right. And they have the veterans, and the guys that have been there before. It meant nothing. It, geez. Hey, man. The is, Timberwolves decided to play defense in an NBA playoffs. My two favorite players are in New York and Minnesota. Mm. Jalen Brunson, who I believe is the player I could have been. <laughs> and this 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 guy, Ant-Man, I... He doesn't care. Listen, what I thought Devin Booker was could have been, what I thought Jason Tatum could have been, they don't have the stuff up here that this kid has. Mm-hmm. I, as a Kobe Bryant all-time like enthusiast and fan and an MJ supporter, mm-hmm. forget Devin Booker, forget Jason Tatum. This this dude right here, he's the next in line mm-hmm. of like the historic two guards. Yeah, he's only twenty-two, yeah. and he could make the finals mm-hmm. in Minnesota. Yeah, like. Something, did, something that Kevin Garnett struggled to do. He he, he gave it his all and made yeah. it to the Western Conference Finals. Right. And that's as far as he could make it one season. But right now. Like, Anthony Edwards is making all the best players in the league look like nothing. Yeah. He hasn't even hit his prime yet. Yeah, he's making it look easy. Yeah. Uh, he was toying way. with Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Now, part of it is his other teammates have also stepped up. Oh, yeah. their Their defense has been... They they are playing like early two thousands. I won't go as far as the Pistons, right? But man, they're playing early two thousands. As far defense. as today's NBA, yes. that's as close as you're gonna. They're get. pissing people off to the point where they think everything is a foul. Yeah, and it's just g- good defense. <laughs> yeah, they're picking up Jamal Murray full court between Jaden McDaniels yeah. and Nikhil Alexander Walker, and they're not letting him move. And those guys are long and lanky, and it's it's causing a lot of problems for Jamal Murray right now in the second round. Um, but they just, they've just they just bought in defensively. And then that's kind of like, I don't know if it's wearing the other teams down, and then that's kind of freeing up Carl Anthony Towns. Like He's had, he's in the perfect position. He's now. having pretty good series. Um, we'll get into the second round, but Rudy Gobert hasn't even had to really be there necessarily, which is He's wild. had his best year of his career, mm-hmm. and I have to give him credit. 
Two years ago, we said this was the worst free agent signing ever. I don't know if I went that far. I was I concerned. Thought it, listen, but after a year, I thought it was the worst. Yeah. I thought it was hands down awful. They did the give up a ton of draft capital for it. Yeah. But I thought there was a chance that things could work out. But to this extent, I never thought. No. Um, And then Clippers and the Mavericks. That was the close series in the first round. And yeah, well, I, I already get, I said my piece about the Clippers. <laughs> like, I loved, I like Ty Lue as a coach a lot. But the guys that they have on this team – it's just not, no. Yeah. You you can't get it done with the, the, this mix of guys. Mm-hmm. You just can't. Yeah, and the Mavericks, they won the series 4-2. to two. Kyrie had a clay, crazy closeout game. Yeah. 28 in the, was it just the fourth or the second half? Something like he, that. He went insane in the second half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, especially because that last game, Luka was really struggling. Um, and so, again, they also had guys that stepped up. Played some good defense. Daniel Gafford actually had a really good defensive series. Um, what was another one that I was going to bring up? Derek Jones actually played pretty good too um, for being a limited role player. But they just kind of figured things out. And, yeah, like you said, the Clippers are just – they're in a rough spot. I don't know what they do or where they go from here because they're kind of like the Sixers. Like all their experiments feel like they've just kind of run out. And they – Went and got James Harden, wasn't enough. So, like, again, it's one of those teams where, man, you look back, I don't know, five years ago, you would have thought this team would win five straight championships. Having Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden, that sounds insane. But that's just the state of the game today. Half of your t- half of their team are guys at a crossroads in their career. Mm-hmm. And I don't <laughs> – that's never good. <laughs> You have a bunch of dudes looking at themselves in the mirror saying, what am I doing now? Yeah. I think tough. this also ends the P.J. Tucker experiment, I hope. For it, teams. it didn't even start. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah it's, he needs um, to go overseas if he wants to keep playing. When uh, teams thought that he was the answer to their championship woes, um, I never understood it. But, yeah, the, the Clippers are in a rough spot now, and the Mavericks, they get to move on, and they're playing the Thunder. How much do we even say about the Pelicans Thunder series? I, that's like, why I glossed over it. That's oh. why I just said the Thunder did <laughs> yeah. good. Pelicans, no Zion. It's just mm. another disappointing season for the Pelicans, unfortunately. And I don't know where they're going to go because Zion looked really good. He had his best game of his career and yeah. he got hurt. I'm still kind of in the camp where, you know, maybe you let go of Brandon Ingram. It just seems like those two can't play together. And Trey Murphy, I think at this point, could be your number two guy. I want him I to agree. leave so that he comes to the Pistons, but that's a whole other story. Um, but Trey Murphy is a merging talent, so I think they could use somebody else. Um, maybe a true point guard, so you move C.J. McCollum back to the two. I don't know, but they got some things to figure out. Anyway, we started the second round uh, this week on Monday. The Knicks playing the Pacers. And your guy, Jalen Brunson, went crazy and won the game, basically. Because the Pacers were up for a little while. A lot of the game. Yeah. Their their fast-paced offense, just like running and gunning and shooting, was challenging the Knicks. Yeah. And there were some calls. (laughs) There were some calls. That were sketchy. Yeah. And even the league has walked back on them a little bit. In football, I mean, the NFL, NBA, college football, college basketball, I do not question – Referee calls, mm. I rarely ever take them into account in games because refs are bad on all levels, <laughs> and I don't know why all people think don't think this way. Mm. Because complaining about refs to me doesn't mean anything at this point. Yeah, we've been complaining about refs for since the beginning of time. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, gonna it's not going to change. Yeah. So, but listen, the, I'm. I told you, I'm rooting for the Knicks. I'm happy they got it done. Yeah. I would have liked to see the Pacers take game one just to make it a series, but I feel like... Halliburton, six points. Yeah, that was wild. Wouldn't shoot in the fourth quarter. Please don't turn into Ben Simmons. Please don't turn into Ben Simmons. (laughs) At least we've seen he can shoot at least. Yeah. Um, And then, man, those dang Timberwolves playing the Nuggets. They're making the returning champs look like a high school team. Game two... Yeah. Denver looked more lost than I've seen a championship team look mm-hmm. in a long time. They Beat looked, them by 26. 
they looked like their talent got stolen, their hearts got stolen. Mm-hmm. Everything they were just got stripped away. Yeah. Jamal Murray threw a heat pack on the floor. He was so angry yeah. <laughs> about everything that was going on. He just completely lost it. Mm-hmm. And he's lucky he didn't get suspended. Yeah. They hit him with a big fine. Yep. Um, they need Michael Porter Jr. to step up, I think, in this series. Well, he, he's been on fire for most yeah. of the play. Jamal Murray hasn't been very good right. in these playoffs. But, um, yeah, the Timberwolves stole both home games against Denver. Yeah. They could sweep the former champions. That sounds crazy. How do you not, like, call make them the favorite to win it all? If yeah, they sweep right Denver? now. Yeah. Um, And then the Eastern Conference, we had the Celtics make the Cavs look silly as well. Um, yeah, I, I I don't think the Cavs have much of a chance. No, Donovan like, Mitchell is the only guy with a pulse. Jason, Jason Tatum didn't have a good game. No, but Derek White, Derek White did. He has been lights <laughs> out, man, all season long. He has been at a high level. He's taking it up a notch in the playoffs. Yeah. It's crazy. And Jalen Brown's playing really well too. The trajectory of Derek White's career. It's something. It's wild. He was like a young up and coming guy in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. And now he's he's like one of the most trusted veterans in the league now. Yeah. Um, and then we have the Thunder take game one from the Mavericks. Yeah. Mavs just didn't shoot very yep. well at all. Which I mean, that's kind of their problem. Like if Luca doesn't play well, it it's hard for them to win. And the Thunder are just a lot deeper, I think. And they just I don't know. The Thunder are another one of those teams that seem like they care a little bit more. That's why I want the Western Conference Finals to be okay, see Thunder, Minnesota. Minnesota. What? It's who? Wild. The, who on earth could have? Yeah. Nobody predicted that. What to start timeline? The season. What timeline are we on? I don't. I don't know. It's basketball changing though, and it's exciting. Especially because in the Eastern Conference, it might just be Celtics Knicks, which is like an old school kind of conference yeah. final. And then we have yeah. having an old school Minnesota. matchup versus a weird new school matchup. Yeah. Yeah. So that's making the playoffs exciting to me is seeing some of these up-and-coming teams, um, like we said, especially the Timberwolves and the Thunder. But yeah, My dream is Minnesota versus New York in the finals. In the that, finals. that would just – I'd have versus, a smile on my face every single game. I think – 40 for 40, every other game, just trying to match each other's 40s. I just feel like at that point the Timberwolves would win. They would. I they just, would. Boston would give the better fight. Like right but now – I just – seeing the Knicks in the finals would just be so good for basketball. Yeah. Yeah, I think the the ultimate matchup, if you wanted like – purest basketball i think you want celtics timberwolves yeah because you have a crazy defense with just a really good overall team okay see new york would make no sense yeah that'd be wild <laughs> like the, av- the average age of okc is 25 mm-hmm. sam hankey is a witch yeah <laughs> I, I don't know what weird magic and i'm doing. pretty sure they still have a lot of picks coming up still yeah they, he won't trade them no he won't. <laughs> he's just stockpiling them Making other GMs uh, mad. Uh, yeah, I don't he's, get it. He's an evil man. Would, he's an evil man. Uh, the Thunder don't really need Jaden Ivey, do they? Listen, get the trade anyway. Is, come on, Sam. Trade, trade the trade some of those picks. We'll take something, please. Something. Please, sir, can I have some more? Yes. Give us some more picks. Four. <laughs> Give us four or five, maybe, please. Anyway, so next week we'll get into more NBA playoffs as that rolls along. I don't know what else is going on in sports. I guess we could talk about the terrible. Well, they're not terrible. The Tigers are kind of. The Tigers are like, uh, they're better than last year, but. They're on the verge of. They're 19 and 18. That's better than last year. And they should be much better. They're taking baby steps instead of grown man steps. They have a lot of hitting issues. They. Yes. That's the problem. Can't hit the broadside of a barn. You've got a potential like top six or seven pitcher in the league. Mm Mm-hmm. And the bullpen is, like, carrying you. Yeah. Yeah. Weird times. So, we'll have to figure out what to talk about next yeah. week. Riley Green, 264. Best hitter on the team. Oh. <laughs> Gotta love it. All right. With that, this has been Views from the Sidelines, and we'll see you guys next week. Go Knicks. <laughs>